We are excited to announce the premiere of a new show, Isle of Hope with Alan Mo. Isle of Hope is a variety show filled with funny skits, jokes, tips, and advice for teens in today's world. Isle of Hope will entertain you and keep you laughing. So stay tuned. everyone, welcome to Isle of Hope with me, Mo, and me, Ella. Tara will bring you a weather forecast like no other weather forecast in the world. Cicada May will help educate you with the word of the week, and just stay tuned. There's too much for me to go over in one sentence. Not everything we do is in the studio. Ella and many other teams on our show, myself included, perform at public venues all over the country. Ella, tell our audience about the video that's coming up next. We do get out and about. This next clip is from a recent engagement at the National Palace. I'm singing Sunday Morning. I hope you all enjoy it. Oh, 
makes me wish it was already Sunday morning. It's a relaxing relaxing, lazy day. I understand, but you can't take a nap right now. We're kind of in the middle of filming a TV show, and there are a lot of people out there that really don't want to watch you snoring. I don't snore. Anyway, I know that Tara is about to give us the weather report. Maybe we are about to have one of those rainy, cozy, lazy days coming up. Hello, everyone. This is Tara Townsend bringing you your upcoming weather. And tomorrow, our weather forecast is calling for all volcanic eruption, making it rather toasty, all the way into the three and four hundreds. We will then have tide waters to flood the whole world. At least on the bright side, it'll go down the lava. Or wait, will Earth even exist after this? Oh gosh, too much thinking for me. Well, that weather report was about as far as you can get from a rainy, cozy, lazy day. Ladies and gentlemen, we do need to tell you that we love Tara, but her weather reports lately have predicted some crazy things. I don't think Nashville even has a volcano, and we're not in an area that can have a tidal wave, so everyone remain calm. We're joined today in the studio by my brother Elliot. Elliot is going to lead us in a discussion about a topic that is very important to us all. Hello, I'm Elliot, and this is going to be the first Isle of Hope Real Talk discussion. Today we're going to be talking about bullying. So to start off our discussion, I'd like to say that 20 to 25 percent of all students 6th through 12th grade have been bullied. So I just want to go around the circle really quick and introduce everyone. Here we have Allison, we have Mo, Shelby, and Sammy. And I'd just like to ask everyone what their personal definition of bullying is. We can start with you, Allison. My personal definition of bullying would be just putting other people down in a physical or verbal or mental sense. All right, good. No? Mine would be like teasing or calling people names, stuff like that. Show me. Mine is just going out of your way to humiliate somebody when it's not necessary at all. That's a really good one. And Sammy. I guess mine would be intentionally hurting somebody because that person has been hurt before themselves. All right, that's all really great input. Um, and now with that said, I'd like to go over just very briefly that there is three types of bullying. There is verbal bullying, social bullying, and physical bullying. And right now we're going to start with verbal bullying. just like to go over that really quickly. Verbal bullying is the most common type of bullying with 77% of all students having experienced it in some way or another. So I'm just going to sort of open this up to the panel and see if anyone maybe has had an experience with it. Sammy, Shelby? Um, once um, this year I was in math class and this guy just brought up something and he started calling me names, just that ugly, things that I wasn't. And one time this one person said he liked me and he was like, no, I would never date that. And... It just got out of hand, and I had to get out of school because some people were just being so mean. So you actually had to leave school because this was getting bad? Yes, everyone. Uh, I actually heard you just moved here from Florida. I did, yes. Oh. Well, it's I better now. I hope you have a much better experience here in Tennessee. Thank you. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? All right, well, we can just go ahead and move on to the next subject. Um, the next topic is going to be social bullying, which is actually a lot like verbal bullying. It just has to do with larger crowds of people and social networking. So once again, I'm going to open it up to you guys to see if you have any thoughts on that. Well, last year when I was at school, I'm homeschooled now, I had this friend and she had, she struggled with depression and had this time where we couldn't really talk to her. And then I had to separate from her for a while and she started spreading rumors that I tried to commit suicide, which I didn't. And then I tried to stop and I didn't really know how to make her stop and I tried to confront her but she said that she did, she wouldn't spread rumors about me. So I went to the counselor and I told my parents and they had to sit down with her and they had to talk to her about why, why she wouldn't spread rumors, why she shouldn't spread rumors about me. Well, it sounds like you handled that in a very mature way. Does anyone have any uh, related experiences about that? I actually have had the same thing happen to me except this person told everybody that I successfully committed suicide. This friend, and he posted a picture on Instagram, and he said that I committed suicide, and everybody thought it was true. Most of my friends were thinking, that's not true, she would never do that, she's not that kind of person. But a lot of other people did think it actually happened. And it got so out of hand that 
my principal contacted my mom and that we were going to have a discussion about it to see if it really happened and who started it and why. And then it kind of died down and people stopped talking about it. And the boy who posted the picture, he got his phone taken away and he was suspended from school for a couple of weeks, which was pretty good. Oh, sounds happened. like he deserves that. <laughs> um, is there anyone else? There was actually just a few days ago, a friend of a friend on Facebook posted about her depression and how she was struggling with it and how hard it was. And another Facebook friend of hers commented on it and said that like, her words were, well, you just go kill yourself then. And um, wow. she, there wasn't really anything to be done. That girl was apparently confronted by other students, but as, as far as I know, nothing else happened from there. I think we can all learn a little bit of something from that. And we can move on to our last subject of bullying here, which is actually going to be physical bullying. This has to do with any sort of negative contact with other person. It can be hitting, pushing, kicking, anything in that sort of manner. So um, once again, I was hoping to up to you guys. you have anything you want to say about that? I actually have something. My brother's girlfriend, her name's Gloria, she went to this old school in Nashville, and she was physically bullied a lot. She was really, really short. She's really, really tiny. And so she's able to fit in lockers and she's really small so she could easily be pushed downstairs. Um, my brother told me that she was pushed, shoved in lockers and kept inside there for almost days, like an entire day of school. And nobody would help her. Nobody knew about it. She didn't really have a lot of friends there. And she would be pushed downstairs down the stairs, because it was a two-story building, she would always be pushed down the stairs and constantly bullied by everybody. She would be slammed into lockers in the locker rooms, and it was just a mess, and it was terrible for her. But she finally transferred schools, and now she goes to my brother's school. So that ended happily. Oh, at least I'm glad she got out of that situation. What do you think you would have done if you saw her in the hallway being bullied, Allison? If I had seen somebody in a locker or being pushed around, then... I would actually stand up for them and actually that did happen one time at my old school where there was a girl who was bullying this guy and so I went up to the girl and I made her stop because she was hitting him and so I just told her, you know, you can't do that and then she went away. So if I had seen that then I would have helped her, I would have confronted the person who was bullying her and if that didn't work then I would have gotten somebody to intervene. Alright, I think that's a really mature decision. Alright, so that's going to conclude today's Real Talk discussion on Isle of Hope. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. And for anyone out there who's being bullied, you're not alone. Please go get some help or talk to someone. It continues to amaze me that people can be so cruel to one another. It is much easier just to be nice. And speaking of nice, our new the Astorino sisters have stopped in for a visit. They are super nice. If there is anyone out there that likes small exotic animals, make sure that you're paying attention. The Astorino sisters are going to share their personal exotic pets with you. Yeah, I gotta hold one of them. <laughs> but I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I also know that Dallas is here to tell us about another really expensive car in the auto report. And then Jordan Mackey is going to take us to a random place and tell us all about it. Hello, I'm Brittany, and today I'll be interviewing the Astrina sisters. Please welcome the Astrina sisters. Hello. Hello. So where are you girls from? We're from Columbus, Ohio. But we thought today, instead of making this interview just about us, we thought we'd show you a couple friends we brought along. This is our ferret, Phoebe. Phoebe Toes. We call her Phoebe Toes. And why do we call her Phoebe Toes? Because she bites our toes. Especially when we first got her, she would bite our toes. Yeah. So she thought she was playing, but... That's right. And Brittany, would you hold her for a second? And right here, right around, right there, yes. Those are her venom glands. You don't want to touch those. Now we have another ferret right here. His name is Apollo, and he's white, but he's not albino, as many people think white ferrets are. You can tell because his eyes are black and not red. If you would hold him for me a second, we have a couple other animals to bring out for you. And we're just kidding about the venom glands. They don't they really don't. have venom glands. So our next animals... What do you think these are, Brittany? Hamsters? Oh. These are actually marsupials, and they are called sugar gliders. Yes. And their diet consists of protein. We can feed them fruits or vegetables. And out hey, comes Lydia. Electra right now. This is Electra. Here she is. And she's a little sugar glider. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is Echo. 
And see, when we first got our sugar gliders, we knew we were in for a big responsibility. We hold them about eight hours every day since we got them. And luckily, we're homeschooled. Yes. Yep, so they're named sugar gliders. They like to glide a lot, so they have skin along their sides that help them glide. Yep. Right here, here's some. Oh, Brooklyn, what's in the box? Oh, these are London's hedgehogs. These are my hedgehogs. They are from Africa. Their name is African pygmy hedgehogs. They're not related to porcupines, are they? Nope, they're not related to porcupines at all. They don't even shoot out their spikes. But when they do get stressed, their feces turn green, so... Wow, I could have gone my whole life without knowing that. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, y'all. I'm Dallas Shimmington. Welcome to the Isle of Hope Auto Report. In the USA, we're seeing an increase of sales in diesel-powered cars. With a 30% better fuel economy than gas and 15% more energy in every drop of fuel, the Audi TDI clean diesel is not only p more powerful but more efficient. Check out the Audi A8 and Q7. They have a list price of $75,100. That sounds like a bargain. By the way, do y'all know what only starts to work after it's fired? A rocket. <laughs> This is Dallas Shimmington reporting. Until next time, let's keep that pedal to the metal. Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan Mackey with Hometown of the Week, and this week is Jordan, New York. So Jordan, New York was incorporated in 1835 and has a population of 1,326 and is located on the Erie Canal. The village of Jordan has six police officers, and they all wear funny hats. Jordan also has an old town square and many quaint small antique shops. If you find yourself up north near Jordan, New York, take some time and check it out. Great name for a town, huh? Well, this is Jordan Mackey, not the town. See you next time. And now, a word from the National Eggplant Association. Okay, so I don't get it. Is it an egg or a plant? I don't even know why it's purple. Well, one of us has to taste it. I'm not tasting that. Oh. Fine. Mm. Mm -mm. No, it's definitely a plant. It's got seeds. Say the line. Hmm? Say the line. Oh. <clears throat> Eggplant. We don't know what it is, but <clears throat> it tastes great. No, 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 no. Cut everything. What kind of face was that? You're supposed to be happy. Smile. It's a commercial, people. Try it again. Take two. So, I don't get it. Is it an egg or a plant? I don't even know why it's purple. Well, somebody has to try it. I'm not trying that. Fine. <clears> hmm. <throat> cut! Cut, cut, cut! I can't deal with the face! Ah. Yeah, goodness gracious, people. Oh, I didn't hire you to be grumpy on set. We're going to try it with you now. Smile. Take 25. Well, I'm not trying it. Fine. Try it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is a vegetable. It's supposed to bring happy thoughts, health. Okay, if you guys can't do it, I will. <laughs> it's just a little taste right here. Mmm, -hmm, can't be that bad. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> On the count of three. One, two, three. Eggplant. Egg we, we don't know, know what, what it is, is but, but it, it tastes, tastes great. great. Okay, that's a wrap. Well, what about my payment? <laughs> I, I fed you dinner, didn't I? You fed me nasty eggplant. No, come on. What? Well, just just check at the office. They'll, they'll clean it up. Ew. This. 
it's a pretty color. God, what is that? You don't throw that stuff down in the bayou. Ooh. So sorry for Cicada Mae. That must have tasted really bad for her to spit it out and throw it away. And she threw everything away. She'll eat anything though. Well, next we are going to hear from Jordan about one of her personal experiences. Sometimes I think she and Cicada Mae are cut from the same cloth. What? Oh, so I was just talking to my boyfriend and he is the captain of the football team and also the quarterback and I'm the captain of the cheer squad. And he was going on and on about how hard football practice was today. And I said that cheerleading is way harder than football. And then he got all defensive and mad at me and started saying how he had to memorize plays and all this stuff and yada, 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 and stuff I really don't care about. And then he said he had to call an audible. Like, who is audible? I really like that. That was so great. I hope that our audience liked it too. Oh, you know they did. And if you think that was great, stick around and watch this. Hey y'all, it's Cicada May, and I'm back with the word of the week. And this word of the week is, can you guess it? Oh wait, no, you can't talk back to me. Anyways, it's Pearl. Now, I will spell it for you. A-P-P-A-R-L, apparel. Now, I will use the word correctly for you in a sentence. Me and Mr. Mike were at Billy Bob Joe's Crab Shack and I was eating some oysters and I opened them and then I found a pearl in it. Hmm, I think I'm smart. My shirt says so. Deny us. <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Well, goodbye. Have a good week. Hey y'all, this is Dallas Sherrington and welcome to the Isle of Hope Farm Report. <laughs> Today's soybeans are $12.90 per bushel and corn is $4.44 per bushel. And cotton is $83.61 per hundredweight. Did y'all know the corn is used to make up moonshine and ethanol? Ethanol makes up 15% of gasoline used in the cars in the United States. I wonder if you run your car on moonshine like you do on ethanol. Speaking of corn, at my grandma's, she's, fro she's froze 240 years of corn this year. She froze 180 off the cob and 60 on the cob. She said she would have a lot more if it weren't for them dirty raccoons and deer. Thanks for joining us today. My grandpa once said, once there was a worm in a cornfield, you know what? He went in one ear and out the other. This is Dial Shermington reporting live from the Isle of Heart Farm Desk. I love Cicada Maid. Genius. <laughs> Only her. Did you know that Dallas is from Kentucky? Yeah. Do you think that she's ever thought about some of the names of the towns that are from her state? For example, there's a town named Gravel Switch, ouch, and another town named Grassy Creek. Isn't that just a pretty name for swamp? <laughs> and what about Burning Springs, Kentucky? Are the springs on fire there? Or Battletown, Painville, Kentucky? Battles and pain. There must be something historical about all that. And then they have Albany, which is also the capital of New York. Very confusing. And Anchorage, which is a major city in Alaska. Maybe you should ask her, but I don't think it would make much of a difference. Sometimes things are just confusing. You know, she did talk about moonshine and worms going in one year and out the other. Well, Mo, I know that you have a treat for us as we close the show. For the first time airing on TV, your new video, Wasted. I know that everyone in the audience will love it. Thank you, Allison, and thank you to everyone who joined us today.
Watching. Hope you enjoyed our show. We'll be back. <laughs> Please put that in there for real. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> we'll have a bunch of alternate endings. <laughs> we need that though, because it'll be like, because I'm like, it's <laughs> recovering and you're just like, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our show. We'll be back. You come to <laughs> Okay. Is that good? <laughs>